Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new Destiny 2 build video. So today we're looking at a build that uses the brand new Prismatic subclass, as well as the Ergo Sum Sword. Now for the exotic armor, I would highly recommend the Solipsism Warlock Bond. It's the brand new exotic bond you can get for doing the two-player activity called Dual Destiny. It's actually a very, very easy activity. It only takes about 20 to 30 minutes once you get it down to run it, and you can keep getting this exotic Warlock Bond every single time you do it. It's very easy to farm. Now basically what this exotic does is you get two random exotic perks. Now there's only about 10 to 15 exotic perks you can get. So getting the two that you want isn't too hard. You probably have about a 10 to 20% chance of getting at least one of the good exotic perks you want. The big one you want, of course, is Spirit of the Necrotic because damaging targets with your melee poisons them. Defeating a poison target spreads the condition. So you throw your melee at the enemies and when they die, it explodes, just creating a massive explosion, killing all the enemies nearby it's such a good exotic trait especially for this build now throughout the gameplay i am using the ergo sum sword with the arc conductor intrinsic trait very very good of course it's not required you can use any other ad killing gun that you want but it works really really well with this build so i would definitely recommend it if you have it now for the abilities you want to use in the prismatic warlock class so first i use the brand new song of flame super it's amazing for dealing damage to ads as well as pretty decent at damaging bosses especially if you have no ammo and all your other guns honestly the super is just pretty darn good overall it's nice it's a new one it's fun to use i would definitely recommend using that one for the powered melee i use the arcane needle for strand now with this build you're able to get your powered melee back really frequently and every time you get a kill with your powered melee you get a bunch of buffs that help you stay alive and kill enemies really fast this build is basically focusing around getting your powered melee back really fast so you can spam it at the enemies gain a bunch of buffs to do extra damage stay alive and kill enemies very effectively now for the grenade in the gameplay here i'm using the storm grenade but you can switch it to the healing grenade if you're in a harder activity but overall the storm grenade's great for killing a bunch of ads in a tight area so overall you can switch between the storm grenade and healing grenade depending on which activity you're playing now for the aspects i use the helion solar aspect now this just gives you the solar mortar so every time you're relatively low on health or you're getting bombarded by a bunch of different enemies just pop your healing rift and get a little buddy that shoots mortars solar mortars that explodes on the enemies and helps really deal with ads very effectively for this one you can kind of switch it out for the weaver's call strand aspect but it's it's really just preference for this one. Next, I use the feed the void aspect. So when you defeat a target with any ability, you get to activate devour, which basically means anytime you kill an enemy, you get your health back. And remember, we're getting our powered melee back really fast. So you should have devour almost always, meaning you're going to be able to get your health back really fast, especially if you end up going with the ergo sum sword with the trait I was talking about earlier. So those are the two aspects you're going to want to use. And then of course, you can switch out the helion aspect for the weaver's call strand aspect. Now now on to fragments. So the first fragment I use is the facet of purpose. So you pick up an orb of power and it grants either amplified restoration, frost armor, woven mail, or overshield. So basically every time you're getting a kill with your powered melee, you're generating an orb of power. And when you pick up that orb of power, you get restoration, which lets you regenerate your health and basically never die. Next, I use the facet of balance. So rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with darkness grants grenade energy. So you're kind of working back and forth with your powered melee, your grenade, you're getting both back really Really fast and you're basically going to be spamming those two abilities and with, and with this fragment it makes it a lot more effective next i use the facet of dawn so your powered melee hits against targets makes you radiant so again you're getting your powered melee back really fast so when you're radiant you have a 15 percent damage buff so it just helps you be a lot more effective in ad killing and damage against bosses next we're on facet of protection so while surrounded by combatants you are more resistant to incoming damage while transcendent so of course using the prismatic subclass you're going to be transcendent somewhat free Frequently, every time you're trying to damage bosses or just using your prismatic ability to get your nice grenade and get your powered melee a lot faster so overall pretty damn good and lastly i use facet of blessing so melee final blows start health regeneration while transcendent so another fragment here where once you activate your transcendent ability or your transcendent super i guess you can call it you can get kills of your powered melee which you get back incredibly fast and then you just are able to heal and stay alive very easily now let's get to armor mods so for the helmet you're going to want to use arc siphon 
So rapid arc weapon final blows creates an orb of power. Now since I'm using the Ergo Sum Sword, which is the arc variant, this helps me generate orbs of power really effectively. But depending on which weapon you're using for killing adds, you can definitely switch the siphon. Next I use hands on, so you gain bonus super energy on melee kills. And since we're using our powered melee super frequently, since we get it back so fast, this is super helpful for getting your super. And then last, heavy ammo finder is just always nice when you need heavy ammo to help deal damage to bosses. Next we're on to the gauntlets. First I use heavy handed, so your powered melee final blows creates orb of power. Just another mod to help you gain orbs of power when you're just spamming your charged melee. I also use momentum transfer, so causing damage with the grenade reduces your melee cooldown. And since you're going to be getting a grenade from using your powered melee, it just works hand in hand. You can spam your grenade when you need to get your melee back. Lastly, for the arms, I use melee kickstart. So when your melee energy is fully expended, your armor charge is consumed and you gain melee energy for each armor charge you use. So if you're out of your charged melee, it'll use your armor charge to help you get your melee back faster. Now onto the chest. So first I use arc reserve since of course I am using the exotic sword that is in the arc variant. You can of course change this depending on which weapon you're using. Next I use charged up so it, inc it increases the amount of armor charge stacks you can have just cause if you run out of your powered melee, you can have more armor charge stack up so you can actually get your melee back faster. And then finally I use harmonic resistance, but you can also switch it with whatever resistance mod you want. Now for the legs, I use invigoration twice because this reduces your melee cooldown each time you pick up a more power. And remember, you're generating a lot of orbs of power just from killing adds, so you're gonna be able to get your melee back really fast. And then last, I use stacks on stacks, so you get an additional armor charge, which of course, if you don't have a melee, you get your melee back. Now into the class item, I use time dilation. So your decaying armor charge has a longer duration, as in if you have maxed armor charge, you're not going to lose it if you're not killing adds that fast. Next round to outreach reduces melee cooldown when you're using a class ability. Again, all this is back into just getting your melee back really fast so you can generate orbs of power. And then lastly, distribution reduces all ability cooldowns when using your class ability near the targets. Now, as I was recording this video, I actually got an insane double armor perk on the brand new Solipsism Exotic Warlock Bond. So of course, I have Necrotic, which is a really good bonus when you're using that strand melee. But I also got Spirit of the Swarm. So destroying a Tangle spawns Threadlings, which just works perfectly with the RK Needle. So honestly, if you're looking for the best double perks for this build, it's definitely Spirit of the Swarm and Spirit of the Necrotic. I got super lucky on my second run to be able to get this. Such a good dual combo, exotic combo that works really amazing with this build. But yeah, that's the build. Definitely let me know if you guys are going to end up trying it. Honestly, it's so darn good for ad clear and you get your abilities so fast. It's just it's one of the most fun builds I've had, especially with the brand new Prismatic Warlock subclass. Such a fun build, such an amazing build. I've just been enjoying it a lot and I would highly recommend it. Now, if you don't know how to get this Solipsism Warlock Bond, there is a really easy guide on Azdacross's channel. I would highly recommend going checking that out. But yeah, that's the build. Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this build. There, of course, is going to be a dim link of the build in the description down below if you just want to get that really quickly and move on but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in a future video peace out